Hello indie game fans, here are more of the best indie game deals for the Steam Summer Sale with prices decreasing as the video goes on. And as compared to my other video covering the sale, the discounts here are not as good but are still great value beginning with Tunic, a game that, on the surface, looks like Zelda with a fox but does hide so much more. I'll not get into specifics, but to give you a hint, the old school in-game manual and indecipherable language are key and will make you feel smart, which in addition to the exciting combat and clever puzzles makes this a no-brainer pick. Here's a fun title that might be under the radar in fights in tight spaces, a roguelite deck builder mixed with a turn-based tactical game set in intentionally small rooms, hence tight spaces, in which you are duking it out with enemies. You have a variety of different styles to choose from, which then informs the cards and abilities available to you as you take out enemies with successive combos. The game does make you feel like John Wick in how you are dispatching of your enemies with martial arts and if you want more, the developers are working on a sequel named Knights in Tight Spaces which is just the cleverest thing for it to become a series. Here's an underrated local multiplayer title named Samurai Gun 2, the sequel to a similar title in which you play as samurai and have to take out your opponent but of course have a gun as well. When people talk about competitive multiplayer party games, the ones most commonly brought up are Towerfall and Duck Game, so this is underrated, so go pick it up and break it out for your next party, with this sequel featuring quite a number of crossovers with other indie game characters from Spelunky 2, Minute and even Among Us. Indie developers have really been on a roll with the PS1 era visuals, most commonly seen in survival horror games, and one that is the poster child for that is Alyssa. Our heroine is trapped in an old Victorian mansion and then begins to get attacked by doll-like humanoids with some creepy enemy designs and haunting visuals, giving me a little bit of a vibe similar to American McGee's Alice, which I don't think is a coincidence. Similarly, in the spooky vein, we have Inscription, one of the best games of 2021, which is, strangely, a card-based roguelite title but not exactly in the vein of Slay the Spire, as is common in this subgenre, but in which you are attempting to beat your opponent. Its art style is awesome, and while spooky, it's not exactly a horror game, although it can get you at times, with a larger meta layer to the game as well with escape room style sequences as you explore the cabin. It's difficult to talk about this game without spoiling it, but take my word for it and jump in. A more classic first-person puzzle game is Manifold Garden, one which looks absolutely stunning with the gimmick of recursion as you explore a world of impossible architecture. This takes inspiration from the work of MC Escher, showcasing the beauty of geometry and while the puzzles themselves are not super unique, largely amounting to locating blocks and placing them down, how you get yourself to the right position is the interesting part. It is pretty, surreal and mind-bending as you explore and is a must-get for puzzle game fans. There are quite a number of indie monster taming games in the style of Pokemon down to the exploration and turn-based combat, with the Nexomon series being of note, and Extinction is 67% off and is worth picking up if you don't own it. You play as the newest member of a Nexomon teamer guild, leaving the orphanage that you use to call home to travel the world and to tame all 381 of these creatures with the ultra-powerful Tyrant Nexomon that you need to battle, 
not to mention tamer battles and more. Combat here is based on an energy ST system rather than an absolute number or PP system in Pokemon, so there is more strategy to the combat, with there being a sequel in development as well. A lot of people still don't know about this game which is why I try to talk about Outward Definitive Edition wherever I can, an epic open world fantasy action adventure RPG with survival and crafting elements. While it does look like The Witcher, this is something different and honestly quite a bit more janky but it has some interesting ideas worth exploring. For one, you are not some powerful warrior or mythical hero with an ancient secret bloodline or anything of the sort, being just a regular person and that shows since you can and will get killed quite easily, especially at the start of the game. However, there are truly no rails to this game, so even early on, you can wander in any direction that you please, which of course does result in death, more often than not when you run into a powerful monster. But it's that freedom which is one of the appeals. There are also survival elements like having to eat and drink, and more interesting is the way that the game handles saves. There are no save slots like in a Bethesda RPG, but rather the game autosaves periodically so there's no saves coming here, making you really think about your actions and their consequences. However, it is not without issue since combat isn't fantastic and the no save slots plus some possible bugs and jank could mean that you need to root around the game directory to retrieve a save if it bugs out but it is quite the fascinating title and lo and behold there is a sequel in development as well which hopefully addresses some of these issues. Alright, a no-brainer for indie game fans is the sci-fi metroidvania title Axiom Verge which, to be honest, might as well be called a metroid-like since there is relatively little Castlevania in this as compared to its metroid influence. Through a series of sci-fi events, you find yourself on an alien world building a variety of weapons to deal with enemies and bosses as you seek to make sense of the world. However, it is more than it seems with alt modes for the weapons and even the ability to glitch through the game as an intended part of the design so you could, for example, pass through walls to access new areas. I love the throwback pixel art style which is beautifully executed and between you and me, I think that this is better than the sequel so 80% off is a pretty good deal for this game. A standout indie hit which spawned a subgenre of its own is Luck Be a Landlord, the so called symbol building roguelite in which you are selecting icons and placing them on a slot machine, spinning it, and having said symbols combo with each other so that you get enough money to pay the ever increasing rent. It's a pretty simple idea but it's beautifully executed here and while the simple pixel art may not be for everyone, if you enjoy roguelite, you owe it to yourself to try this out. Watch this video for more awesome indie games.